Hello and welcome to English Podcasts with Chris and Sue. For more information, visit english-podcasts.com. Hello, Renu. Hello, Chris. How are you? I'm good today. How are you? Yeah, very well, thank you. Um, just a quick um, reminder, which I'm sure you're aware of, is the COP26 is coming up in Glasgow between the 31st of the 10th and the 12th of um, the 11th. Um, and it's a big conference on basically saving the planet. Um, COP means conferences of the parties. How is it doing in India in terms of green awareness, in terms of uh, basically cutting back on greenhouse gases and emissions? Um, well, it's not as um, advanced, let's say, as in the Western world, um, as in the European world, let's say, um, which is uh, which I'm more familiar with. But um, we're getting there. I mean, they, they cut out some years ago in Delhi, which is the capital of India, they cut out um, uh, lead, uh, lead diesel and lead um, gasoline. So they cut that out to reduce, you know, carbon emissions. They um, planted, they're planting more and more trees all around India, recognizing that this is a way to save the planet, you know, to counteract. But then you get in places like where I am currently, which when I came many decades ago for the first time to visit, was totally green. It was jungle. It was ruled by the monkeys. And now it's ruled by the concrete buildings. Mm. And the monkeys, you know, have nowhere to go. And there is so much pollution here compared to decades ago that I cannot tell you. And also, as I understand it, you know, India has quite a high, you know, on, on the, I don't know where it stands, but on the pollution, you know, uh, record uh, that they, they have, India is kind of scoring quite high on, on pollution levels. Very. Apparently, there's a big attachment to coal in India. Yeah. Uh, Coal-fired power stations, etc. Uh, coal burning as well. Mm. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so in a place like this, we don't have lead-free emissions, you know, all the, the tuk-tuks, the little three-wheeler autos that people are transported on, you know, because we don't have a bus system here. We don't have a metro system here. So everyone's tra and and you know you're driving along and and you'll see these huge emissions coming out. Mm. You know there's no there is a certificate I can't remember what it's called, but it's a pollute. There's something like a pollution certificate. So every year you have to undergo a pollution test. You know which wasn't there. You know uh, several years ago, um, and only then is your car qualified to be on the road. But but it doesn't look to me that that's actually working. No, I I, I, I have often thought in India that many cars are, would never even be on the road in Europe. That, that you see, um, and, and, and the big lorries that just pump out black smoke. Yeah, um, perfect. Okay. Yeah. Um, also, there's a lot of plastic pollution as well, isn't there, in India? And, and what I noticed, in fact, um, is that even young people will buy, I don't know, sweets or, or something from a shop, and they just throw the, the, the packaging away. And I thought young people would have been a little bit more aware and a little bit more careful about this. But no, it didn't seem to be. No. Yeah, you're right, Chris. This is what I've observed as well. And um, I'm just going to make this point because I find it particularly unusual is that you're living by the banks of the Ganges, which is a very holy, sacred river revered by Indians, you know, for millennia. And people are worshipping the river because it's a source of life. You know, water is a source of life. And yet, so I see these people worshipping with, you know, with lights and incense and, and flowers and what have you, the tr traditional worship uh, methods. And then, you know, all this stuff comes in a plastic bag, you know, the flowers and the incense and the, and the what, what have you. And then they do what they worship and then they just chuck the plastic into the Ganges, you know, and it's like, hello. Um, and I often, I used to, I gave up now. I was like the pollution police. I used to go after people and say, what do you think you're doing? You're worshiping. And at the same time, you're, you're killing her, you know, yeah. you're choking the river with plastic. The same with cows, you know, cows are like um, revered, as you know, highly in, in, in India, the cow is called mother, mother cow, go mata in Sanskrit. And again, you know, people are, you know, disposing of their, you know, food remnants, you know, in plastic bags. And 
Oh, it's been said, I mean, I haven't seen this, thank God, but it's said that sometimes when they, you know, uh, when they've been, when I don't know why they've dissected a cow, but anyway, when, when they have, they found that many cows have died because of the plastic poisoning. Yeah. Uh, and they found a lot of plastic in, inside the intestines of cows. Yeah. Totally because agreed. cows are just trying to grab their food and in, in the way comes the plastic and yeah. that gets, you know, swallowed. So. Yeah. Uh, there's a bit of like, um, I don't know, there's a bit of a dichotomy here for me to understand. Uh, and um, as you said the about word, the- Yeah, dichotomy, because on one side, you have this really sort of mystic caring about uh, things um, uh, and making sure they're eating the right foods, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And on the other side, it's a total opposite where... They, they, you know, I noticed lots of polystyrene, lots of plastic, lots of and as you say, you see water buffalo by um, lakes, by temples, etc., just chomping away at, at bits of plastic, uh, and in and in the centre of Delhi, in, in amongst all of this pollution, and yeah. with with this type of thing as well. It's, yeah, and the other the other interesting thing is that the earth is also like the Ganges, like the cow. The earth is considered a mother because she nurtures. You know, we get all our food from the earth. So she's considered Mother Earth. And so, you know, we, we know that, you know, we have to protect the mother. And yet, on the other hand, that doesn't carry into practical life. Yeah. What I did notice, though, in South India, in the Western Ghats, the mountains, um, yeah. in Kerala and in uh, Tamil Nadu, there were many um, of the stations uh, at, at altitude at the bottom, where you started to climb up, police would stop the people. And if you had any plastic containers in your car, you had to throw them away. If you went further up, because there was another, you probably probably crossing a, a state line, probably from Kerala or Karnataka into Tamil Nadu or whatever. And if the police found you higher up with plastic, you got a fine. And I noticed in some of these 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 hill stations around uh, Munar, etc., it was impeccably clean. It really yeah. was clean. Was that a recent thing? Um, this was well. This was two years ago that that I went. Um, I, I, apparently, it's something that they're trying to do. But I mean, it. I, I think most of it, and this is what going back to my point on on young people. It is. is are there any sort of educational programs you know is it sort of you know put in front of people that you know well we should be actually picking this stuff up um, I, I, I'll give you a you know a, a sort of a, a parallel if you like I remember a few years ago in Stockholm in Sweden I was walking along the road and there was somebody in front of me and there was some plastic on the floor uh, like a wrapper of a chocolate bar or whatever and I saw this person go and pick it up and put it in the bin now it wasn't theirs and they yeah. picked it up and put it in the bin. And Stockholm, absolutely spotless. Can you imagine that happening in India? Well, I've done it. <laughs> yeah, apart I've... from you. <laughs> no, um, it, I've rarely seen it. But having said that, um, in Rishikesh, there has been a Clean Up Ganga campaign mm -hmm. and um, Clean Up Ganges campaign. And so you do get a lot of kids, I mean, young, you know, teen, late, well, late teens, early 20s, you know, walking around, uh, picking up, you know, uh, garbage around the Ganges. Um, so there is that happening more before. I mean, picking up garbage is considered to be like the lowest grade job, you know, and it's considered like, you know, like you've got the lurgy if you do it, you know. That's everywhere, isn't it, really? Um, I don't know. I think I felt like there's more a taboo about it here in India, okay. you know, cleaning toilets and, you know, picking up garbage and all this kind of stuff. But then, you know, this campaign was brought about actually by a Westerner. And so maybe that influenced people as well, because West is still considered best mm -hmm. in India. And so then she, you know, there was a, a big group that, you know, and then other Indian, then apart from this group, there are other Indians um, who have set up similar groups to, to clean up the Ganges. And it's become quite, uh, quite popular now. Um, uh, so I think there is some level of awareness going on. There is some level of education going on, but it's still... You know, in its early stages, let's say, 
I think we're about 15 years behind the Western world, if not 20, okay. you know, in, in terms of, you know, uh, you know, understanding, you know, the practice, you know, what we can do practically in our lives, you know, to protect, you know, for, you know, for climate change, yeah. for earth protection. But I mean, they can do stuff because I noticed in India, you, you in Delhi and everywhere, really, you cannot smoke on the street. And if you smoke on the street, you're in trouble. Um, maybe not so much if you're from Europe, but Indian people, are, you never see them smoke on the street. Oh, no? Have you ever noticed I, this? No, not at all. I mean, um, yeah, I suppose it's not as prevalent as it is in uh, as I, uh, the UK. But, um, uh, but here in India, I, I do see people... Uh, yeah, I, I do see people smoke on the streets. Actually, it's not it's not illegal by any means. It I mean, is in Delhi. Hmm, maybe you, can, but you not, cannot smoke and you cannot uh, vape on the street. You know the electric electronic cigarette, and no. also in Bangalore it's the same. I don't know whether it's all uh, Karnataka, but uh, Bangalore and places in uh, Varkala, for example, in uh, in 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 uh, Kerala. Yeah. You're not allowed to, not allowed to at all, and the police will stop you. And I, 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 I think I was smoking by a tea stand or whatever, and a policeman wagged his finger at me, but he wasn't going to do anything because you know. Uh, because, you're, because you're white. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But if it had been an Indian, I think they would have been in, in some sort of trouble. So I think well, what we should do, we'll keep an eye on this cop. I think I don't know if you can get the news so easily there. Yeah, yeah. But, um, I know there were, there, there's been some pro, uh, uh, reports on the BBC recently about uh, India's reliance uh, on, on coal and how they have to break this re reliance. And um, China has vowed not to build any more coal-fired power stations. Right. That's said. That's what they've said. Yeah. I mean, India has so much, like you know, potential power from water, from from the sun. Um, so this it is doesn't exactly what, the, what this report said. Yeah. It doesn't have to rely at all on coal. Absolutely. We, I mean, is India could be hugely rich, you know. Yes. If it just you know made the solar power it could make and sell it. I think mm -hmm. the problem that they were talking about is, in fact, investments in infrastructure, which yeah. is the, which is lacking. It's not so much a desire not to do it because i mean once you've got solar power you never pay for it again <laughs> you know yeah. it's fabulous I think, well it's it's politically motivated i think um mm -hmm. i think it's i think there is some you know conspiracy or let's say i don't like that word particularly but there is some influence from the from other countries around the world to you know keep india down and you know oppress india and somehow india has taken the handshake and not you know gone into that area of solar power mm. I'm, not, I'm not sure i never actually understood why why there's actually what was behind it you know what well, was it could as well for poor people it could be quite a good thing because what happens in france and this will obviously happen in, in india is that you you can only use so much of that electricity you can store a little bit of it uh, but it you know as long as the sun is shining or the wind is blowing it's still generating so a lot of people in france actually sell uh, electricity back to the grid yeah uh, so so that they they have a surplus of what they need and it's sold automatically back to the grid so they're actually making money Mm. Yeah, that's a good incentive for people. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, we'll keep an eye on this. Yeah, and we do have incentives here for people uh, and subsidies here for people to use solar appliances. Okay. So, I mean, there, there, there is there is movement towards it. There is awareness. There is education. There is practical, you know, actual, you know, things happening. Like, and um, I see more and more because I I run a sustainability initiative. And where where I supply, you know, sustainable products, lifestyle products. And I do see, you know, through my connection throughout the whole of India, that there are more and more of such organizations springing up. And there's more and more awareness about sustainability, whether it's to do with ethical fashion, slow fashion, or whether it's to do with, you know, not using plastics. And, you know, there are groups, there are WhatsApp groups, you know, from all around India, um, Facebook groups, all sorts of things have come up. And so I do think the new generation, you know, have more awareness about this. And I think the ancient, ancient generation, well, it wasn't about awareness. It was just like a way of life to be sustainable. Yeah, sure. You know? There were, there were no plastics then, yeah. you know, and and that's that's just how you lived, you know. 
you know, everything was recycled and composted, et cetera, et cetera, you know, and, you know, you'd go to the, you'd go to the grocery grocers, you wouldn't buy anything packed in plastic, you'd go with your little, you know, you know, your little tote kind of, you know, bag and bag, you'd, yeah. get it, you'd get it filled with lentils or whatever. Yeah. And, and nowadays they've started this, they did this in the, in, in the UK many decades, I think a couple of decades ago, you go in with bottles to shops and you get your oil refilled. You know, you don't have to buy another plastic bottle of oil. I mean, you must have that there, right? Yeah, we do, yeah. yeah. Uh, mm. um, same with washing up liquid, whatever, whatever. You know, so there is definitely a, quite a profound movement to, in that direction, but it just hasn't taken off yet. And But this throwing of garbage is a very popular thing, you know, and a lot of kids do it. You know, you, you're driving your car and then suddenly all this garb, you know, people are just throwing garbage out of their yeah. cars. Yeah, yeah, I've seen it, yeah, on buses and cars or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, even the wealthy, educated people, yeah. you know, it doesn't make any difference, you know. Mm. Mm. Um, right, right across the range of wealth, you know, you know, wealth, you know, in this country, sure. people are doing it. It's not to do with education. It's not to do with wealth. People. I think it is to do with education because it's about responsibility, isn't it? You know. Yeah, I mean, okay, you I mean, throw it out, and then it's no longer your responsibility. But in fact, it is because you are polluting something somewhere, or you're adding to that pollution. So it is your responsibility. So I think it's quite important that education responsibility actually. Oh, yeah. You know. I mean, there's not, there's, there's, I mean, when I say education, I meant general education, you know, general yeah. curriculum education. So that doesn't make a difference okay. in the sense that if you've been to a posh school and if you've been to a government school, it right. seems to make no difference. Mm. Um, specific education, you know, geared towards sustainability is definitely lacking and it should be introduced into the, into the curriculum of, you know, schools across the board that, and that hasn't happened except for, you know, in alternative kind of educational models like, you know, Montessori and, and you know, other alternative streams of education. Mm. But, you know, I think I think because, you know, you know, if you go on Instagram now and you look at Indian, you know, Insta um, accounts, you'll see a lot of sustainability initiatives, okay. you know, set up by young people doing amazing things, you know. You know, they're doing the whole upcycling thing as well. You know, they're also like believing now this is like really taboo in India to wear someone else's clothes apart from your family's. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people are, you know, go getting into secondhand shops and, you know, you know, recycling clothes like that. You know, um, there's a fantastic woman here in Rishikesh and she has all these seconds and, you know, I don't know where they come from, but they're fantastic designer labels and um, they've been used, you know, and people are buying them. Indians are buying them. Yeah. And Indians have a thing about like, oh, you know, clothes carry bad energy if they're worn by someone else. And, you know, so... Yeah, definitely there, there is a practical initiative towards this. There's an awareness initiative towards this, but we're still, you know, we've still got a long way to go, at least we've started. That's all yeah. I can say. Yeah. But and, I think, once again, I think it's all to do with um, education and communication. Once that's through, I think, and then people becoming responsible. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah, well. Thought, oh, just one last thing. I mean, you know, I, I just mentioned Mother Earth. I mean, there are prayers to Mother Earth. You know, yeah. there are there are actual ancient, ancient five thousand year old prayers to Mother yeah. Earth, worshiping the Earth, worshiping the rain, worshiping the sun, worshiping the moon. You know, worshiping all of the natural you know, of, of the cosmos. And yet, you know, with that history in India, people are still continuing to destroy the planet. It's like yeah. you know. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. But yeah. one thing that really shocked me, just as a last one, was uh, when I went to Agra, Agra was like knee deep in plastic and dirt and broken yeah. down cars. And then you go to the Taj Mahal, which is pristine, is beautiful. You cannot take plastic in there. You, yeah. you know, it's absolutely fabulous. But you just go outside of this and... Mm the reality hits and in fact you know we plan to stay in agro for three days i think we stayed uh one two nights i think we stayed in the end and we, um, and we, we had to get out it was just it was filthy it really really was filthy. Well, yeah, yeah yeah okay well that's been a really interesting exchange yeah i mean it'd be good to come back on 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 the cop just to see you know what people come out with about uh you know the various countries because obviously there's a lot of greenwashing going on you know the um, the, the 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 talking about you know um 
the, the, the Conservative Party in the UK, for example, are talking about, you know, uh, clean power, and yet they're opening up uh, coal power stations. And yeah. Australia, very, very big on green power, apparently, but they're, I think they, they've got massive, massive power stations with coal. OK, it's like India, I think, you know, they've got a lot of reserves, but, you know, to actually get... Have you ever seen an electric car in India? Yes, I have, indeed. Ah. Yep. They're used, I've seen them primarily in um, resorts, you know, where, um, you know, big resorts where they have a lot of beauty and landscape and and they just want a very peaceful, serene environment. So they have these electric cars um, ferrying people. I wouldn't say it's a car. It's more like a... A golf I don't know. cart, like a golf yeah, cart. A, yeah, a golf cart, that's yeah. it. But the electric car um, and the electric bike, I think, has been launched okay. or was about was about to be launched when I last heard of heard I imagine about. Tata would be onto that. Yeah, probably, yeah. yeah. So um, it is in the pipeline if it hasn't already happened. It's, it, it, I'm, I'm, a friend told me he was going to buy an electric um, bike the other day, um, but it hadn't come into the marketplace yet. So definitely, yes, it's there. But then people have their concerns that if they have an electric, uh, you know, vehicle, then what if they need to charge it, you know, midway yeah. somewhere? And well, this is a, the thing. Again, power, back to infrastructure. There's a power cut, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> then, if the infrastructure know. isn't there, the, 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 right. it just won't work, will it? That's anyway, correct. well, thank you very much for that, Renu. We can come back on a lot of these subjects, I think. Oh, yes, very much, yes. I have a whole load of ideas streaming away in my head. So um, Excellent, excellent. Okay. Thank you very uh, much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. We hope you enjoyed today's podcast. Join us again at english-podcast.com and subscribe to our podcasts on iTunes. And if you have an idea for a podcast or a blog, please get in contact with us through the site at english-podcast.com. 